So you want to collect video games. Welcome to the most fun you will have tearing your hair out. <laughs> uh, what's up, Ginger Beard fans? I've got another awesome video for you guys. And it's one that I've been thinking about for a while. I really have, actually. I mean, this is one of those topics that people ask about or people don't really understand. And I look at people like me with my pretty awesome collection and they don't know like half of what goes on with it and a lot of people have questions of like how do you get into it stuff like that and today we're going to talk about that so kick back pull up a chair grab a cool drink and let's talk about video game collecting now there are many, many different ways to collect. It's possible to collect a lot of different things, but this is a great spot to point out lesson number one. It's true. The only person you have to listen to is you. Forget about those other haters. I mean, it's not their collection, it's yours. Now, that said, it is a good idea to put some constraints on your collection, especially when you're starting out. Um, you don't want to go for every game on a platform, especially ones that have hundreds of titles like the Super Nintendo or the Sony PlayStation or PlayStation 2. There's a lot of games to collect there, and that can be a very daunting goal. The, the whole point of collecting is basically setting goals for what you want to get. So if you like RPG games, you start collecting RPG games. If you like racing titles, you start looking for racing titles, and you start seeking out other racing titles that you don't have and that's kind of like the the progression of what you're going to look for um like for me i set a goal to buy every to acquire every single ps1 dance dance revolution game both us and japan and it took me a while but i did it i have all 15 titles check it out right i mean this is something that i was really proud to complete I know, it's pretty awesome. You know, just that that taking the time to find all the different parts, put them together, and just finally say, I have them in my collection. I mean, that's pretty awesome. And that that's that awesomeness, that, that feeling that you get when you pull it off. That's the goal. And that awesomeness is whatever you decide. Now, that said, it's a good idea to start small. Because if you go too big, you get overwhelmed, you fail, you feel terrible about it. Start with small, easily attainable goals, especially when it comes to collecting. If you're going to be going for something ambitious, be ready for it. But this kind of brings us into point number two. Everything has a price. And it all boils down to how much you're willing to spend and how much you're willing to wait to try and find a better deal. I mean, for example, I spent 90 bucks for my copy of Conker's Bad Fur Day. It's a great game. I have no regrets about spending the money that I did on Conker's Bad Fur Day. Because it was a, it's a solid title. It's one that I've wanted to add to my collection. And the price was reasonable enough. You know, it was that was market rates at the time. I was willing to spend that amount. But... When it comes to collecting, you have to weigh how much you're willing to spend and how much you're willing to wait to get that game that you want. And let's be honest, you could just go out and find a complete set of ga of like N64 games for like $5,000. But who has that kind of money? I don't. I, I would love to have $5,000 to just drop on a whim. But you and I, most normal people don't have that kind of money so we can't really afford to do that and besides it kind of misses the point of point number three there is a rush when you finally find that game you've been looking for that one that's been sitting there on the shelves just shouting at you i'm here buy me when you finally track down that game there is a rush to be had in that. And really, that is the entire point of collecting. Half the fun is that hunt, finding that last item. Like for me, 
I am one game away from a complete PS2 set, and both US and Japan, and that is that that last game has been a hunt, a real hunt to find. I don't have it yet, but I am so I am looking forward to that day when that when I finally hold that game in my hands and go, I got this. I finally have this game. Like there is a rush when you're hunting for video games, when you're collecting that and not only that, but also looking for deals. Finding that game that normally retails for a hundred bucks for two dollars at a goodwill. I mean, though, there's a or or a garage sale or or a charity shop or whatever. There is that thrill in the hunt that a lot of people seem to forget. So don't look at collecting as a I need to spend all this money. The first thing you should be doing when you're hunting is you should be having fun. If you're not having fun collecting, you're doing it wrong. I, I'm, I'm just going to say it, you're doing it wrong. Because you should be having fun doing this. If you're not, I mean, something's very wrong here. I mean, something's very, very wrong if you're not having fun collecting. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, once you've figured out what you want to collect next step is to start looking. If you're looking for a specific game, then you might want to start telling your friends, family members, co-workers, people like that, let them know that you're looking for this. Extra eyes means extra chances to find the game you seek. It's not weird. You need, it's not weird if, you've, if, you're, if you're open about your hobby and, and you're not creepy about it. Most people will be like, yeah, I'll help you out. You say, hey, I'm looking for this game. You know, you have a picture of the box art on your phone. Say, here, I'm looking for th I'm looking for this game. If you happen to see it, you want to let me know and leave it at that. You know, if they if you want to if they ask you to send it to them, then they've got it on their phone. They can say, oh yeah, you were looking for this game. Bam. All right, I know I can let I can let you know. I mean, it works. It really does. You also want to look at watching like Craigslist, OfferUp, LetGo, Facebook Marketplace, local pawn shops. Uh, you know your local game stores even a lot of times you can find some really really good stuff at these sorts of stores um, even goodwill for that matter I mean a lot of the rare games tend to get locked up uh, in the glass case or they get put into like silent auction type type of deals but every now and again you run across something that slips through the cracks and is um, reasonably valuable so it doesn't hurt to watch and it doesn't hurt to keep checking r routinely. That's actually that's how I've that's how I've amassed a good chunk of my collection is just watching and waiting and keeping tabs on things. Don't be afraid to check garage sales either. A lot of times you'll find somebody looking to offload a console or some games, and sometimes they might not even know what they have, and that can be a great way to score a, just a killer deal. Don't be afraid to look into bulk lots either. I mean, you can do some really good deals through bulk lots where you'll have one game that you're really looking at and at wanting for your collection, and there might be four, five, six, ten other titles that you really don't care about. That might actually work in your favor. Because if the overall price is cheaper, sometimes you can get yourself a nice deal on a big set of games and then you've got a couple titles that you can sell off or barter with other people for to get other games that you do want. So there's an ounce of wisdom to getting extra and then rolling with it and getting something just to get the game that you want. Sometimes you need to turn to eBay. Now, don't get me wrong, eBay is a great place for sourcing those last couple titles finish out that goal of that you're collecting. I mean, I had to do that for the majority of my uh, DDR collecting on the PS1. Most of those games came from eBay. The one downside to eBay is you have to be vigilant. Watch for you know the seller rating, uh, look for pictures, make sure that you're getting make sure that you're getting what you're what you think you're getting. This is especially true for cartridge-based games. There are a lot of bootlegs on eBay. Like, a lot, a lot. 
So if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. Um, if you don't know what to look for for bootlegs, YouTube is a great resource. Uh, Metal Jesus posted a great video with Kinsey from uh, Pink Gorilla out in, si in Seattle, Washington, talking about how to identify bootleg uh, Game Boy Advance and also bootleg uh, SNES games. And I'll put I'll put the link to the SNES uh, video down below in the description because it's a good watch and definitely worth checking out. Um, but like, know what to look for, and if you don't know get a second opinion. There is no harm in getting a second opinion from somebody. Ask a local expert. Find collecting groups through Facebook or other meetup sites. Get to know people who know what to look for. They'll watch your back. Plus, they might also be able to help you find one of those one of those games you're looking for. So it can be mutually beneficial. Now, if you want to collect something but you're not sure what, Video Games Monthly is a great way to kind of expand your horizons. Uh, you've probably seen some of my videos already uh, unboxing the games. Uh, if you've been watching my live streams, you've seen me rage at Super Mario Bros. 3, uh, get Try to Be Stealthy and Siphon Filter Dark Mirror, and I've picked up some other great titles along the way, like this Monopoly Complete in Box that was basically a collector's copy at this point. You know, for lack of better words, I got this from Video Games Monthly, and it's it's a great way to expand a collection without breaking the bank. And you can get some solid titles. I mean, the Battle Stations, a Monopoly. I got SOCOM Three this month, and there's some good games you can get out of this. So, Video Games Monthly might be an option for you. Just saying. So, once you have this awesome collection started, it's important to take stock of what you've got and basically make an inventory. I mean, this, and this is important for two reasons. First, it tells you what you have. And this is important because you don't want to be like me <laughs> and get two copies of Siphon Filter Dark Mirror. I mean, it's cool now I've got one that's open and one that's sealed, but this is not a game that I wanted two copies of. I mean, but here we are. Now that's not to say it's not worth having two copies of something. I mean, I've got two complete sets here of Xenosaga. One was mine and one was my wife's. Here, see, two complete sets of Xenosaga. I mean, like I, I mean, this was uh, one from me, one from my wife, and we're keeping them. I mean, is it worth having two sets of that? Hell yeah. But I mean, if you if you're trying to procure, you don't want to be getting multiples and then have to try and pare it down from there, you know? So the second reason why you would want to keep an inventory is a bit more, a bit darker. It's in the event of loss or damage. If my house burned to the ground, replacing all these games would be a nightmare. It'd be devastating. But at the very least, because I have my inventory, I am able to go to my insurance company and say, yes, I have this Super Mario Kart complete in box. I've got all the dot, all seven dot hack games. I've got all these DDR games. I've got Persona 4. I've got these these Saturn games from Japan. I've got Panzer Dragoon complete in box. I'm able to that I'm able to keep stock of what I have so that when it comes time to replace it, your insurance company is going to look at you and go, okay, what did you have? And having an inventory with and pictures that goes a long way. It really does. Personally, I use an app called Collectors on my mobile phone. Um, <laughs> they're not sponsoring me for this vi video, but they really should. Um, they're a subscription-based service. It's like an annual subscription. I use this for my games, my music, my movies, and my books. And it's really, really nice because I just open it up. I take... I'm just going to grab DDR Ultramix 4 here. I scan the barcode. And it pulls up all the information right away, so I don't have to. I don't have to futz with it. It's simple. It's easy. It's automatically uploaded to the cloud. It just makes things work. It just. It works. It, and then simple as that. And it's nice to have an easy to reference database right here on my phone. I can just pull it up and say, "Oh yeah, I'm at the game store, and do I have this game? Let's take a look." Blah 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 boom, and away I go. And that's 
a handy thing to have. And there, there are other apps similar to Collectors, it's just that's the one that I use. Um, and it's, it's not super expensive, but it, it gets the job done. And I can go onto a, my computer and I can print out like a PDF uh, spreadsheet with all the details. Makes it nice and easy to work with. And, it, and it's handy. And, and above, above all else, it's handy. And that's kind of the, that's kind of the important. But here is how I organize my collection. The retro station I use for streaming is right over here in the corner. I keep all the games for those platforms close to the TV, along with the peripherals that I need for those platforms. These Billy bookshelves from Ikea, perfect. They, they look good, they're relatively easy to install. I mean, it wasn't cheap. I mean, I spent like close to 400 bucks on bookshelves just to get this nice and organized, but I tell you what. Once I got it organized, it looked great. <laughs> I do need to put a, like a two by four behind most of the games so they don't get pushed back. I, I, I like keeping everything organized and, and like up to the front of the shelf. It, it's an aesthetic thing. You know, it looks neat, it looks clean. You go right up to it, pull it off the shelf. And that's, does that ease of like organization really set really makes things easy easier for in, in general but that's the important thing organization keep the keep your collection organized the only difference between collecting and hoarding is organization this is a collection a pile of games in a quarter is a hoarder situation nobody's gonna want to see an awesome collection that is stuck in a corner and has a but and has a, an empty 7-eleven cup sitting on top of it that's just nasty that's gross nobody wants that collection like this looks pretty good just saying and once you once you've organized your collection trick it out up here on top of the bookshelf i've got a gunpla model kit that i picked up in tokyo that's the rx 178 titans prototype mark three i think is what they called it I've got uh, the Aliens Colonial Marines Collector's Edition statue. Yeah, I bought the Collector's Edition, and I have lots of regrets. <laughs> but at least that statue looks awesome. I mean, look at this thing. This is a well-designed statue. Just saying. I mean, it looked really cool. So, and that's the one bright spot in that turd of a game. Ugh. I've got the boxes from the Retrobit Genesis and Saturn controllers that I have. Partially because I love that 90s aesthetic. And it goes great next to my Sonic Mania Collector's Edition. Like, it looks fantastic. And if you've got Collector's Editions, show them off. I mean, that's why you have them. And you put the, put the box up on the shelf and say, yeah, I got this. It looks cool. It, it's a bit of that nerd cred. You know face some of your games out so that you can see the, the front box art. Do this for games that you really like. I mean, I do, I've do. i got it for my mother too, Super Mario RPG, the Monopoly over here. Games that are cool and I want to show off, they sit out front and center. And it looks really awesome when you do that. I'll let you in a little secret. The best time to collect for a platform is right when the next generation is coming out. Because everybody's trying to offload the old, their current generation to try and get some money to buy the, the latest and greatest. And this is the best time to buy because the market is flooded. GameStop and every other gaming store out there is trying to offload as much as they can to make room for new inventory. And even the people you know, and, you, and even like Craigslist and other marketplaces are flooded because people are trying to sell what they've got so that they can afford the latest and greatest. And that's what I did for my N64. I mean, I spent 20 bucks in 2005 and I got a, I got a smoke gray N64 and it's worth a whole lot more now. I'm just saying. Dude, I got GoldenEye for $7 back then. Good luck finding it for that price nowadays. I mean, seriously. I mean, 
you're not going to find this game for that price. So, like I said, if there's something you want, if, if you're something you're looking to collect and you're just getting started, it might be worth looking at the second latest and greatest, especially as the newest stuff is about to show up. Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't spend money. Far from it. If you've got the money to spend and you've got and you're willing to invest the time into, you know, putting it together, spend that money. I mean, I told you how much I spent for Conker's Bad Fur Day. I mean, I'm not opposed to spending the money, but you don't have to if you if you you really don't want to. And that was kind of the point that I wanted to make. Like, if you want to spend money, if you want to spend lots and lots of money to buy the rare games. Do it. Nobody's stopping you from doing that. A lot of people assume that collecting means spending lots and lots of money. And that's simply that's simply not the case. <clears throat> I mean, my N64 collection, the majority of that value is from appreciation. And I bought most of my games in 2005, you know, 2005 to 2010. And with the exception of Conker's Bad Fur Day and a handful of other titles... The majority of those were five, ten bucks a pop. Some of them were twenty. But I mean, you don't have to spend a ton of money if you don't want to. And that was kind of the whole point of making this video was to really clear the air, I guess. I mean, collecting is one of those things that a lot of people don't understand, especially when it comes to video games. It's like. You buy the game, a lot of people look at this hobby and go, what are they doing? Why are you spending your money? But they don't, they don't understand the whole thrill of the hunt, you know? And that's kind of, and that was kind of the gist. And, and that was what led to this, you know? Or, yeah. But yeah, you know, collecting is a hobby like any other. You know, some people like gardening, some people like CrossFit, others, like me, like hunting down Dance Dance Revolution games, you know? I mean, it's it, it really boils down to whatever you like to do. And whatever you want to, whatever you want to go for, go for it. I mean, I, nobody is going to fault you for wanting to seek out some awesome title. Collecting is... It's worth it. I think it's worth it. Getting it organized is a, is a, is a chore. It, it's a lot of work to get it organized. But the result... This room, the, this corner that I've set up here that you've seen me kind of talking about... It makes it all worth it. I think that's about going to do it for some, for this video here. I've rambled <laughs> long enough here. I stream on Thursday nights, and as a result of this uh, pandemic and everything, um, I'm also streaming on Monday nights as well, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, right now, we've been playing through Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which has been a ton of fun. I mainly play a lot of retro games from my collection. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um... So yeah, I would love to see you stop by, come pay a visit to the House of Dancing Arrows. If you're watching me on YouTube, this video went up on Library First, lbry.tv slash at ddrfreak. I'll have a link down below on YouTube. Um, so if you want to get the jump on these videos, stop by there first. You might, uh, you, and you just might even like what you find. Library is an interesting little site. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. I also have a Discord uh, to come check out and come hang out and say hi. Got a bunch of awesome people. And if you want to talk about collecting or show off what you've been collect working on, I'd love to see it. Um, but uh, with that, I, as always, I am DDR Freak, the Ginger Beard Man, beer in hand today, cause it's a beer kind of a it's a beer kind of a day. And I'll catch you guys later. You have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day. Peace.
but if you've got the money to if you got the money to spend, do it. There, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. Absolutely. <clears throat> there it is, ladies and gentlemen. There's the burp. There's the burp. <laughs> uh.